And now to our currency of the week, pound, dollar, God save the queen, Brexit and Trump, uh, the gifts that keep on giving, providing us with quite a few movements on the charts. But of course, it's not only uh, the political events, there are other things that move the currency. So I chose pound dollar as the currency of the week because of the because we finally have a date, a stronger Britain. Um, the UK is going to leave the EU, announce, make the announcement officially on March 29th, 2017. And this actually ticks the clock back down, begins the clock ticking towards 2019, 29th of March 2019, because according to Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty, there are two years to negotiate a deal. Hopefully there will be some kind of a transitional deal, but maybe not. The EU is of course prepared. Theresa May told us that they'll uh, uh, trigger Article 50 by the end of March, and, and March 29th is certainly meeting the deadline, okay? Uh, but the EU, there were reports that they want to begin negotiations only uh, in June, which is taking their sweet time. And the, United, the European Union is bigger, okay, uh, than the UK, so it has more leverage, and they want to deter other members. Um, from leaving um, the European Union, from leaving the Eurozone. They want to show that uh, Britain that um, it's worse being outside than being inside. They can't get a good deal if they are outside, okay? But um, all this talk, at least the beginning, could be just the initial position. Everything is negotiable and will, uh, this drama will unfold um, initially now and then, well, it could last much more than two years. And of course, there are lots of other aspects here, Scottish independence, border with Ireland. Now let's talk a bit about that, but, but the main issues are uh, immigration and trade. So here on the top, you can see um, the European side, we have uh, Giefer Hofstadt, a Belgian, and Donald Tusk, uh, Paul, and they will, uh, they are sort of leading the Brexit talks on the, just a second, here we are with the bigger screen, on the European side, on the British side, we have David Davis, and of course, Boris Johnson, the unforgettable face, um, yeah, they're part of the face, of course, It'll, many things will come down to Angela Merkel, um, the new French president, and, and uh, Theresa May, so the leaders, of course, basically, the UK wants more migration control, taking back control, but to uh, have free trade. The EU says everything or nothing. There are four freedoms in the European Union. Either <clears throat> you, or open your borders to trade and people or close the borders. So these are sort of the very uh, generic stances. EU nationals in the UK and UK nationals in the EU. I live here in Spain and there are lots of Brits here. Currently, they are bargaining chips in the negotiations. Uh, their uh, future is quite unknown, and I think everybody will pay a price for this uncertainty. The EU could put some kind of a divorce fee uh, on Britain. Britain has obligations to pensions in the EU and other stuff. So things could get quite ugly quite soon. Hopefully, eventually, this is part of the negotiations and uh, there will be some uh, positive outcome at the end. Uh, an immediate result of Brexit, as we all know, as we talked about, is uh, weaker pound. Here's one of the tabloids saying, take a bow, Britain, just after the referendum. So inflation, as we learned this week, leapt to 2.3%. Uh, okay, higher than expectations. Brits are buying more essentials, less non-essentials. This is bad for the economy that uh, your, people are focusing on more on survival, if to put it in, in an extreme manner, and less on luxury to emphasize the point, uh, real wages are slowing and grinding to a halt, okay? The unemployment rate is still low, so the economy is still doing well, still growing quite nicely. And the Bank of England has a dilemma. Should, uh, Mark Arne, should they raise rates to stem inflation? How will that happen? If you have higher interest rates, you'll have more flows into the UK uh, to enjoy these high interest rates and the pound will rise, the pound will rise Imports will become cheaper, and uh, Brits uh, and well, consumption uh, will be more favorable for Brits. Inflation will fall. Okay. 
So, but that would be also a problem for the Bank of England is that it would be a big reversal after the August rate cut, immediately after Brexit, a move that was seen, uh, well, in hindsight, and also some saw it at the time as panic. Uh, this uncertainty could hurt demand. Of course, if you raise rates, you also hurt demand. Loans become more expensive. Uh, the Bank of England, like many other banks, they're not so special. They prefer to talk and not to act. So what we've seen last week with this hawkish tilt, with the vote of Christine Forbes, with other members talking about reducing stimulus, um, that's talk that lifts the pound and doesn't force them to raise interest rates. So here's Mark Carney in, uh, well, a sad moment in Parliament, or at least some, a mellow face. He's stuck between a rock and a hard place. Um, he is likely to talk up the pound in, in uh, future interventions, in future uh, speeches, testimonies, you name it, interviews. Uh, and I don't think they're really ready to raise interest rates. I think maybe even they sent Christine Forbes to vote for a rate hike to, sorry, to push the pound higher and not to, um, and they don't really mean to do it there. It's only talk. Okay. And uh, if you're talking about pound dollar, of course, we need to talk a bit about the dollar. The dollar continues being hit by the dovish hike. We're seeing it this morning as well. No growth, uh, which is a problem, or weak growth. Uh, if we have weaker growth, we have no rate hikes down the road, despite them talking about three rate hikes this year. It might uh, go down to two. We have already one behind us, of course. We had it last week. They're now data dependent, not Donald dependent, okay? Um, everything depends on the Fed. The Fed depends on the data. Donald Trump, now his priority is Trump care. Okay, and I think there's a vote tomorrow. Uh, it, according to estimates, many Americans will lose their health insurance. It doesn't move markets that much, but what's important uh, for Forex is that um, is his priority. So the priority is his health care and his budget favors defense, not tax cuts and not infrastructure. Uh, so uh, th these are things that markets want. So he's not moving forward. There's not going to be any fiscal stimulus or, well, you can always change your minds about that, but it doesn't happen quite yet. And the administration um, of uh, Donald Trump is mired in the Russian scandal. There's an official investigation underway. The FBI is um, investigating people in the Trump campaign regarding uh, links with Russia, collusion to impact the elections. Uh, so, <clears throat> We can talk about that for hours, but it doesn't move markets as much as just the fact that fiscal stimulus is not on the agenda. What's on the agenda for markets is the Fed, and the Fed depends on the data. So what's next for pound dollar? We've seen quite a nice rally, okay? I think last time we talked, we focused on the pound not that long ago. It's, of course, a fascinating currency pair. We talked about Brexit trumping Trump, okay? That uh, it's going to sink the pound. Since then, we've been in range and even pushing up within the range, okay? But I think that Brexit negotiations are going to take center stage. They're going to weigh on the British pound a tough stance by the EU, especially in an election year. Elections are coming in France in April and May, and then uh, in Germany <clears throat> in September. This is going to weigh on the pound. Uh, Brexit is still worse than Trump. It has a bigger impact. And the current recovery seems limited, seems, um, uh, I don't think, again, that the Bank of England is going to raise rates. I think that Brexit will hurt. And the weakness in the dollar, which could last, of course, um, I don't think it's going to be that painful for uh, the dollar against the pound. Okay, so my bias remains negative on pound dollar. Let's look at the pound to conclude our segment about pound dollar. So we had an attempt to move above 125 or a bit lower, uh, basically balanced on the day. Uh, seems like uh, not moving anywhere fast this morning. 125.70. Um, to be precise, is the next level here seen uh, in the end of February. Then it's followed by 126.75 and one. 27.30, and more importantly, as I said, 127.90, the post-Brexit low, the initial post-Brexit low before we went even lower. Uh, support 124.15, 123.50, uh, 
50, 122, 50, and 121. Even lower, of course, we have the 120 level, or symbolically, uh, in the middle of uh, January, the level was 1.1985, 1 1.1985, the year when we've seen these kind of levels in pound dollar. Okay, so um, currently we're sort of in the middle of the range seen since October or even higher in this range. But um, despite all the hawkishness from the Bank of England, uh, I think we have more room to the downside. All right.